Do you often have headaches, fatigue, dizziness, or lots of nosebleeds all at one time throughout the day? This can mean something that maybe you're not quite ready to hear. Today what I'm going to do is show you how to take a reading of, a, of high blood pressure or low blood pressure. With these symptoms that I mentioned earlier, often the outcome of this result is high blood pressure. Now, this is nothing to be afraid of, so today what I'm going to do is just show you how to take this reading and be sure that you have what you, this high blood pressure that is indicated. In order to take high blood pressure, you need three items. First of all, an arm of your patient. Um, second of all, you need a stethoscope. And third of all, you need a blood pressure cuff. Now today what we're going to do is just pretend that this is the arm of a patient that has been complaining of these symptoms that I mentioned. What you want to do when taking high blood pressure is get two readings. The first reading that you're going to obtain is called the systolic pressure. Systolic pressure is the, vein, is the pressure within your arteries that is exerted while your heart is pumping. And the second reading that you're going to obtain is diastolic blood pressure. And this is the, the blood pressure that you're going to see when your heart is at rest. So obviously the systolic blood pressure is going to be the higher number. So when you hear someone say that their blood pressure is 120 over 80, which is normal for, for a patient, um, the 120 number is the number that is being exerted, the pressure number of millimeters of mercury that is being exerted onto your arteries during while the heart's pumping. And the 80 millimeters of mercury, which is the bottom number, is indicated while the heart is at rest. So like I said, um, the two readings are going to be measured in millimeters of mercury on this blood pressure cuff here. When you're applying a blood pressure cuff, you want to make sure that the arrow on the cuff, which is right here, follows the line of your artery, which is the brachial artery right in the middle of your arm. I've drawn the artery right here on, on our arm, and it's this pink line here. So as you can see, the arrow is about two inches from this line right here, and that's indicating the fold in your elbow. So I'll show you on me. The fold in your elbow is right here, and your artery just runs all the way down. So you want to make sure that you have about a two inch gap so that your stethoscope, the bigger end of your stethoscope, can fit right in between those two inches. So what you're going to do first is take this stethoscope and put it in. Make sure that the cuff is lined up to those two inches and you'll apply the end of your stethoscope in between that bend and the arrow. Then you'll hold that there. And you want to make sure that you pump the blood or the pressure cuff up to 20 millimeters of mercury over the normal reading. The normal reading is 120 over 80. So you want to pump the blood pressure cuff up to about 140 to 150 millimeters of mercury and slowly let the dial go. When the dial is released, the blood pressure reading will start to decrease as well. You want to be in a quiet room for this reading because while you're listening, you'll hear a very dull beat in your stethoscope and that is your heartbeat. The first beat that you hear, you want to take note of what number the dial's at. That's going to be your systolic reading. And you're going to listen until the beat slowly fades away. The last beat that you hear before the beat fades is your diastolic. So like I said, diastolic is going to be a lot lower. So we'll take a reading here. And you want to slowly let it go. Okay, so we'll say that the reading of this arm was about 125 over 75. Like I said, the normal is 120 over 80, so 125 over 75 is only about a 5 millimeter difference, so that's very, it's a very normal reading. For someone with high blood pressure and the symptoms that I mentioned earlier, such as fatigue or dizziness or headaches, um, their blood pressure is most likely going to be much higher than this, such as 160 over 100. That's a very high blood pressure that you would want to get checked out by your doctor. 
Now I'm able to talk about this subject today because I'm part of the physical therapy assistant program at Washburn University and I've been trained throughout the past year to take these readings from patients and diagnose them with high or low blood pressure and give them recommendations for how to help them in this with this case. If you have any questions on this demo, you can be sure and look up sites such as medical internet sites. And for these materials, if you would like to order some so that you could practice on your own, you can always order them on the APTA website if you become a member or if you have um, access to these at your school or at your doctor's office, I'm sure that, that would be fine if you would practice there. I hope that you've learned a lot from this and like I said, if you have those symptoms, make sure you go to get those checked out. Thank you so much.